So here's the third, or probably even more than that, video I've made about my game room setup and me setting it up. I did one a really long time ago called Building a Game Room where I first wall mounted everything. And, uh, and then I recently wall mounted the stuff again. And as you see, some of it, like the router is nice, but the rest of it is chaos. Like you see it's chaos, but you see some of it's nice, but then you see chaos. A big reason why I'm doing this again is because I reduced the amount of consoles that I've had because there's a lot of consoles I just don't want hooked up all the time and I just don't want to own anymore. I guess I have really specific taste. So, oh, just look behind it. It's just, it's a mess. It's chaos. Look at this. It's, does this look familiar to you or does yours look normal? And like I said, here's, it's halfway nice and then halfway chaos. I actually posted a video on Instagram when I did this most recently. Here's my Instagram and here you can see how many more consoles I had hooked up then. By the way, you should follow me on Instagram because that's where I post some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Facebook too. I don't know how to use Twitter. I have one. I still don't know how to use it. I'll figure it out one day. But Instagram and Facebook I use. So anyway, here you see over the summer I did it pretty well. But to me it wasn't good enough. And shortly after I realized I have too many consoles. So this is the process starting. Unhooking everything. Just, just unhook everything. Get it all unhooked, pull your consoles away, uh, the different tools you'll be needing. Uh, zip ties, uh, knives, cutters, double-sided tape. Actually, these zip ties are really, really cool because uh, when the blue light hits them, they glow and they reflect. And it's so cool. So fluorescent zip ties, way to go in my opinion. Staple gun, this is how I did it the last time on the Instagram video. I used the staple gun, but we're not gonna use so much of it. And then also, I got some LED strips because hey, if it's the last time I'm gonna set up my game room setup, might as well throw some LEDs in there. So that's gonna also happen in this video as well, in addition to all the cable management. So first thing, getting all the consoles in their like final resting place. Do that, get them out of the way, and then work on the wires. Once you know where all the consoles are gonna go and you have everything plugged in and hooked up, making the wires neat is pretty, pretty easy. So what I like to do, because I've done this several, several times, so I actually have like a system for it. I don't know if that's sad or if that's a good thing, but whatever. Here's all the AV cables, all my SCART cables. Just move those aside, get those out of the way, um, because you're gonna wanna do power first and then AV afterwards. I don't know why, it's just easier for you that way. It takes less time. I got all my HDMI cables separated, and that's another thing. Uh, separating all your HDMI, your AV, your, um, here's the power, like these are my power cables for just my Sony consoles, PS234 and my TV, which uses the same one. Get those separated. Now here's power for pretty much every everything else. When, and then here are the LEDs, because once you have your wires organized, I felt like this was a good time to uh, throw in the LEDs. I'm just gonna lay a strip right there, measure out the strip. Now, I found that if you bend these, they don't really, uh, to like make them go in a circle, it doesn't really work. So I just like to straight up cut them and then make like little wires and like solder little wires so they can bend on 90 degree angles or 80 degree, whatever degree angles. So we're just gonna quickly, quickly, I'm video ADDing out on you guys right now by just being like, oh, okay, we're gonna do cable management. Hold up real quick. We're gonna cut strip some wires. So now that we have all these wires cut stripped, uh, we're gonna tin them. So we're gonna dip them in the flux and oh my God, I can't believe I've used that much flux. I can't believe this tin's almost gone. More video ADD for you. So we're going to uh, tin up all these wires real quick. And then since we cut the, the LED uh, strip right there, we're just gonna solder these wires in between them to allow it to bend nicer so we can, you know, make 90 degree bends around the TV because we're gonna put them on the back as well. Just straight up, just straight up dip the LED cable in some flux, get that excess flux off there. Add some solder to it and we're good. And we're, once we make these connections, I'm only gonna show it once in the video, but I think I did this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. I think I had to do this eight times. I think I did this, yeah. I did this eight times and um, cause I have eight bends in the setup. You don't necessarily need to do this if you were gonna add some LEDs, but I don't know. I just wanted to and I just like to. Get some nice close up soldering. Yeah. 
And then uh, on, I noticed on all these LED strips, they have this like little like they have this plastic film that goes on top of it, and you kind of gotta just like peel it back to expose um, the parts where you solder on, and then just snip it back. I didn't show that in the video, but that has to happen to every time. And we're just gonna throw some shrink tube on it because I don't know, you probably don't need to. And I don't think I did on every single one of them. I think I realized like, oh, this is never gonna get touched again, so we're okay. All right, back to under where the consoles go so we get the consoles some nice little glow underneath. This is an Ikea coffee table, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. Ikea coffee table is my TV stand. I probably could have gotten a, t uh, a regular TV stand or something, but I like the way the coffee table looked. The reason why I snagged it was because I was like, oh man, I can fit so many consoles on this thing. And then we're gonna do some more on the back like all the way around and as you see at like the top corner we're gonna go 90 degrees you see there's some wires up there because that's how they're connected just to make that 90 degree nice smooth easy instead of going around with the LED strip which would have worked huge thing I want to note I've used multiple different LED strips for different purposes pretty much the sticky adhesive on most of them suck so some double-sided tape. I actually went around afterwards and added double-sided tape all over the place uh, behind those LED strips to make them stick. Okay, LED install done. Now we can get back to our cable management and the final resting place. So I, I was figuring out like where do I want plugged in what and then once I got everything plugged in, that's when we can start to separate and organize. The ones I'm doing now on this power strip this is my TV, uh, router, modem, PS2, 3, and 4. Those are the things that I want on all the time that never get turned off by the power strip. The white power strip is things that I don't use on a regular basis. <clears throat> so because I don't use them super often, I want to be able to turn that power strip on and off. So once that gets separated, then you can start to just zip tie everything together. So I don't know why, but I wanted all the cables to be flat next to each other to give like a nice, uh, nice tight feeling. So I made them all flat, which one of them kept wanting to twist, which was a little bit of a pain. I don't think anybody, if you were ever going to do this, you would ever have to go this far into it. But feel free, why not, you know? That's what I always say, why not? So that's what I did on this one, and just continued to, you know, Press them together, keep pushing them together, and fidget with them until the zip tie goes on nice. And sometimes, sometimes you can't get it, and the zip tie doesn't go on nice, so screw it. Just cut the zip tie and do another one. Boom! Almost like magic. Like, how did I have that second zip tie on, on there that fast? Whatever. Doesn't matter. So we're going to do a third one. And it's this third cable that just keeps wanting to twist. It's really, really hard to get flat. Now, like I said, you don't need to do it flat if you're gonna do any of this, but it's just a nice little touch and it just makes you feel good because playing around with our game systems and stuff like this just makes us feel good. It's fun, you know what I mean? It's just as fun as playing the games. I don't know, I like it. That's why I keep doing it. So now we're gonna snip off all the extra um, zip ties to give a nice look and then we're gonna do it again and again and again and again. This amount of footage, uh, I think this was five hours of video footage that I edited down for this video. And uh, here you go, you just get it time lapse because there's so much footage. And here we're doing, um, this is how I wall mounted the uh, Xbox 360 power brick. I just made a little shelf out of some screws and then just zip tied it to the little shelf. Like, hey, whatever works, man, it worked. Uh, you could make some metal brackets. I, I did that before. If you watch my wall mounting video from a year ago, you'll see that I've actually made little brackets for it. But this worked just as well. Here, So here we're doing it to the Wii power brick as well. Just put it on some little screws like a little shelf and then just zip tie the whole thing together. Remember, we're not taking any of these systems out. And here you see on the walls I had all this like excess stuff from like older uh, wall mount jobs that I did. We're just peeling some of that off. All right, round, what is this, round three? Yeah, this is round, round three. So we're going round three right now, and we're doing all the other AV, or power cables from all our other consoles. 
I think we got uh, Xbox 360, the Wii, uh, Saturn, Dreamcast, Super Nintendo, and Neo Geo all going up right here. So it's pretty much the same thing. I don't think I put as much time and effort into making these wires flat. Or maybe I did. Okay, I guess I did. But it was tough because the Xbox 360 one was round. So yeah, whatever, just put it on top. So now we're just doing the exact same thing again. And just kind of trying to figure out like, all right, how are we gonna route this so it looks like the least bad? That was my goal. Why do I care about what it looks like when nobody is ever going to see this because there's going to be a TV in front of it? It doesn't matter. It just makes me feel good. I don't know. That's what I wanted to do. I just want it to be cool. I think it's cool. It makes me feel really good knowing that everything is in its place and never going to be touched or moved. You know what's funny? I said that last time I did this and then I ended up removing about 15 consoles and then had to redo it. So here we go. We get a nice little bend, and then what we're doing is we're putting two screws, and then zip tie around the screws. It's almost like a bracket that holds it on. Now, I don't know if wall mounting this is for everybody, especially in a crazy, chaotic, unorganized fashion like mine, but it was a lot of fun. It was very, like, therapeutic. It, it's, like, very, like, relaxing. It's almost like meditation, because you, your, your mind can just wander while you're doing this, and you don't, you can... You don't have to think about anything. The stresses of your life could just go away. Um, nobody's telling you anything. Nobody's telling you what to do. Nobody's upset at you. It's just very relaxing. And it just feels really good. So I advise it for that reason alone. Unless you have something else that you do that gives you that, then do that instead. So now it's actually starting to kind of come together. Uh, we got the, it looks like... Uh, the last little bit right here, we're doing some AVs. We're just gonna go around, or not AVs, these are power cables. <sighs> Shouldn't I know? Here we go, HDMI cable. That's one of the last little bits. Now when I do all the wall mounting for all these, I leave like the second, oh, here's another, um, here's a close up of how I do like the little brackets to hold it in. I make, I zip tie all the wires together. I put two little screws around it and then just wrap a little zip tie around it. Now I've done so many different ways of mounting things to the wall and this is my favorite little way for wires. It's, it's very unnoticeable. I tried to, I've done double sided tape. I've used the staple gun. I've used all sorts of things. And uh, I like this one. I like this one the most because it makes it the most secure and it keeps it there for the longest. And I, I also am in a situation where I don't care about putting screw holes in the wall because I'll just fill them with wood putty later or in do some painting over it, it's no big deal. Um, it's my wall, I'll do whatever I want to it, I guess, I don't know. So, now that we got HDMI done, I like to leave like the second half because the second half is actually gonna be plugged into all of our consoles, so you need to leave some slack. It's almost like the first half of the wires need can be nice and neat and um, against the wall, but then the second half has got to be loose because some are going to go to the left, some are going to go to the right, etc, etc. And depending on your setup and your situation, it may be different. So now that we have everything to the wall, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup, get rid of all those zip ties, we're going to do a little bit of vacuuming to get rid of, I don't even know how I accumulated so much garbage from doing this on the floor, but that's all gone now. And then here's actually some wood filler. To, for me to cover up some of those previous screw holes and staple holes and all this other stuff that I did where I screwed up the wall. And then uh, after the wood filler dries, just throw some coat of paint over it. Be good, just touch it up. Eggshell white seems to be the correct color. Wood putty, scrape it away. Probably gonna sand it before I paint it, just a little touch up. But anyway, now, since everything's to the wall, it's time to hook everything up to the consoles. And like I said in the beginning, having all your consoles in the final resting place is really important because that's how you can plan out and methodize, if that's even a word, where you want different things to go. And then you can also then also you know like, okay, my Super Nintendo, in case I ever want to move it to the floor, I need to give the AV cable a little bit of slack. So right here, 
we're gonna go the double-sided tape method. And you see how there's a little bit of slack for it? That's so you can actually pull it out a little bit. Now this cable to the OSSC, doesn't ever need to move. The OSSC is double-sided taped down as well. Um, and then that cable is now there for, for good. Boom, done. Don't ever need to touch it. All you need to do is access to flip its switch sometimes. And then here we go. We're gonna plug in the Acura for the Dreamcast. And then the Saturn, We've got the Saturn with its SCART cable just chilling, plugged in. Now we're gonna set up what's gonna go where, everything that plugs into whatever. We're gonna separate it again. We got different power, we got Ethernet cables, we got power, we got power, we got HDMI, we got speaker wire. Slide it all back. And that's why it's important to know what goes where. And I think all I really did was hook up the SCART cables to all the consoles because the the SCART switch is uh, it's right there. So, oh man, I should have wall mounted that. Oh, hindsight. Oh man, that would have been so cool. Why didn't I do that? Oh, it looks like we're gonna have to do this whole thing again in six months. Oh well, whatever. Oh man, now I'm. It. That was such a good idea. Why did I have that right now? Oh well. Whatever. I'm still happy with it. Oh, you got some LEDs going because I plugged those in. And now we're just we're just plugging all the consoles in. That's it. Just plugging everything in, inching it back to the wall, and uh, get to see what the LEDs look like. Here's just it with just the underglow. Pop on the PS3 because that's LED modded. And then here's the final. This is what it looks like. This is it. And then here's the TV with, um, got some LED strips on the back. We're gonna pop this bad boy in and we're gonna see what it looks like. So thank you, thank you for watching. This isn't the first, if you've been watching me for a while, this isn't the first time you've seen me do this. And if this is the first time you've seen me do this, thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope you stuck around to the end to see this finished product. Um, I'm very, very, very happy with it. Thank you guys, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, who knows what's coming next, but probably a lot of mod work videos. I just really wanted to do this.